Welcome to TV3. On this week's episode, we have news from Takara, Figma, I bought a book, and of course, we'll round things out by answering some of your comments and questions in the feedback section. Now, at this point in the show, I would usually have some sort of announcement or alternative greeting or something I want to promote, but this week I got nothing. So let's go to news. All right, so this week the news is actually really light. There wasn't too much to comment on, but nevertheless, I found some small little interesting things. And first up from Takara Tomi, they have announced a couple new Transformers releases and reissues. They showed off a Takara Legends Grand Maximus. This is a repaint of Fortress Maximus. Definitely looks cool. A slightly more interesting one is the Takara Legends Great Shot from their six shot again looks particularly cool especially if you are a braves fan but the one i want to talk about is the reissue and that is because takara is reissuing a fan favorite god fire convoy if you don't know who that is he's also known as omega prime from the 2001 series transformers robots in disguise it was the combination or fusion of Optimus Prime and Ultra Magnus. Now, I have said in the past that this is probably my favorite version of Optimus Prime, at least Fire Convoy is. You know, the Godfire part or the Omega Omega Prime is not necessarily something I'm super into. It's definitely a cool idea, but I've always loved Fire Convoy, and any chance at a reissue is always going to pique my interest. Now, this version has slightly tweaked colors. It's going to have, I believe, uh, also new sound bites to it. I'll totally admit that the toy nowadays doesn't look super hot. I mean, in its combined state, just standing there, arms at its side, it looks great, but it can't really do much, and it's a bit of a heavy parts former. There is one big caveat. For some reason, Takara is charging 30,000 yen for this. Now, I get it. The toy originally came out, you know, almost 20 years ago. There's inflation. The price of oil has gone up. But still, that's a lot of money, and I don't know, I feel like I'm being robbed here. So as much as I would like this, it's not really on the priority, and to be honest, if I could just buy the fire convoy side of it, that's all I really need. And so yeah, it's definitely expensive, but it's still cool to see that Takara are willing to go back and reissue some of these neat toys every now and then. The only other news story I have this week is in regards to a character, or... I guess more specifically, a company mascot, and that is the Ludens. If you don't know who this is, this is the mascot for Hideo Kojima, the man who created Metal Gear. His new company, this is the mascot for that company. And we start off with the Figma. It's going to cost you 12,000 yen, so yikes. That's a lot of money as well, but it definitely looks super cool. If the Figma is not to your liking, there is a smaller one in the form of the Nendroid. And I'll admit, that's pretty cute. It's not for me, but it's definitely a cute little thing. But of course, the one to focus on, the one that I think everyone should be aware of, is the 1 6th scale version, and that is by Sentinel. This is the Sentinel Ludens, and this looks marvelous. Of course, being Sentinel and being 1 6th scale, it is going to cost you a pretty penny, 35 thousand yen to be exact but i would say that it looks like it's warranted i mean again one six scale stuff very very detailed it's got that awesome looking flag the helmet has an led in it so that it can light up the face and being sentinel you know that this thing is going to have some crazy engineering to accommodate for its articulation and it's really neat because when you look at the photos of this toy you don't really see any of the joint cuts maybe it's just clever photography but it looks like all the movements it's making are very natural, and I think that's really what you're paying for here. I really like the way they did that flag. I'm not entirely sure if that flag is going to be lit up or if that's just the lighting. Nevertheless, it's a, it's a cool-looking figure. Very neat mascot design and something that I'm definitely looking forward to. I don't know which one of these I'm going to go for or jump in on yet, but I know I do want one of them. All right, so this week there was a Transformers sale at my local Toys R Us, and I went there with the full intention of buying the new Masterpiece movie Optimus Prime, but guess what? The sale said that it was only Transformers in between the $30 and $60 price range, and Optimus was over $100, so that was out of the question. So instead, I bought this. The Titans Return Overlord. Now, I have opened it up. It's a pretty cool toy. It's a bit simpler than I was expecting, but still lots of fun. I love the colors. I love the ridiculous colors on Overlord. 
And I've always liked Overlord as a general design. This toy is pretty cool. I wish there was a lot more that it could do, like, you know, maybe a waist swivel, maybe a wrist swivel, maybe an ab crunch. Maybe the transformation could be a little bit more interesting. But otherwise, it's a super cool toy. I'm glad I got it on a sale, though. I think I would have been a little bit disappointed if I paid full price. The other thing I got this week was, in fact, the thing I mentioned at the top of the episode, and that is a book. Now, what book, you ask? This book. This is the Overwatch Anthology Volume 1. Now, this collects all of the Overwatch comics in a nice little hardcover physical form. It goes all the way up through the first year of Overwatch's comic stories, so I believe that takes it right up until Uprising. Uh, anything after the anniversary event is not included in this. I'm sure they'll be all included in the Volume 2 or Volume 3 or whatnot, but yeah, it's just nice, you know. As much as I love the digital world we live in, when it comes to comic books, I just can't remove myself from having the actual comic in hand. It's just nice. It's just for me a more comfortable and nicer experience. You know, I won't lie, I have an iPad and I definitely read a lot of comics or manga on the iPad, but I always find my eyes get really strained when I do that and I just prefer the flipping through pages on a real comic book and I love Overwatch like you guys know, so I had to support it by getting the comic book. We've reached the feedback section, and the first one comes from Mondu Mondu, and he says, Do you watch other things than anime, perhaps Rick and Morty? I do watch other things, plenty of other things. The one thing I don't watch that a lot of people are always shocked by are American cartoons that are more on the adult side of things. So Rick and Morty, BoJack Horseman, The Simpsons, Family Guy, anything in that sort of like adult swim section, I just can't get into. I... You know what? That's a lie. I don't I don't understand the appeal. And uh, maybe that's on me because I like some pretty trash anime. So I won't judge you if you like it. I'm just saying it's not for me. It doesn't click for me. But I definitely do watch, you know, other regular shows. I love Game of Thrones. I love Westworld. I can't wait for Stranger Things season two. I definitely watched a lot of the Marvel comic stuff as well as the DC stuff on CW. Um, Walking Dead. You know, a lot of shows that I guess most people talk or watch about or watch i watch a lot of just mainstream stuff just so i can have conversations with people you know at work at social events just things like that um, but things that i'm into you know besides anime um you know i'm currently watching this is us and boy that's a real tearjerker but i'm enjoying it it's pretty good murakumo unit asks if you were to kit bash any bandai gundam kits what scale and kits would you use i'm not entirely sure which kits i would use but i would love to try out that popular or attempt that popular trend that was going around uh, maybe a year ago or two where people took uh like the sd heads and stuck them on the high grade bodies i always thought that was really neat because i've always liked the look of sd stuff i just didn't like how they couldn't do anything and that sort of HG, RG, SD combination seem to fulfill that that role for me. I think ideally what I'd love to do is create my own version of, let's say, a winning Fumina. Maybe not necessarily a girl, but if I could have uh, a more basic Gundam and then have the armor parts create a smaller SD tag team partner, I think that would be really cool. Again, I don't know what kits I would use for that, but it's an idea that I've definitely thought about. What is the worst Figma? Oh, that's a tough question. I think if I had an answer, it would be a Figma I already sold, but I can't remember what Figmas I owned and what I sold. So of the ones I currently have on hand, uh... Emi Ashiro from Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. This is just a super boring toy. The same argument can be said for Rin, but Rin's awesome. She's my girl, and Shiro is not. So he's the worst Figma I have. Who is your love interest in the original Mass Effect trilogy and Andromeda? Also, why? So first of all, I still haven't finished Andromeda, and I haven't even started a romantic love interest. As for the original Mass Effect trilogy, I did play through that game as a girl, so my options were more skewed towards the dudes. Uh, but my love interest was Liara. I thought that she made the most interesting love interest across all three games because in the first one you know she you get introduced to her race and she is the uh race with no sex right there's no male or female there's just one gender and that was interesting and then in the second game she's not even in your party so you have this whole like 
uh, what happened to our status? What's up? What's going on? And she's like this super big, powerful person. And in the third game, it all gets resolved and she's back in your life. And it's kind of like circle complete. Uh, that said, I did like Tali more as well as Garrus. Uh, in fact, I played the game almost exclusively with those two as my teammates, except for the first one where I got Rex. But Tali and Garrus are probably my go-tos if I had to just, you know, say who would I choose. Those are the ones, you know, Tali. But then again, who doesn't love Tali, right? Everyone who plays those games loves Tali. Uh, yeah, there you go. Tali, Liara, Garrus, they're all interchangeable to me. Who's the best girl in Persona 5 and why is it Makoto? Also, are you hoping for a Figma Makoto in the future? So it sounds like you've already decided that Makoto is the best girl in Persona 5. And you would be correct. She is. Uh, there's no one else better. She's smart. She's cute. Her Persona is a awesome motorcycle. And when you evolve it, it becomes a robot. And, uh... Did I say she was cute? Yeah, she's cute. M-E, type V3. What is your job when you're not YouTubing? Well, let's see. I work for a big company. I sit in a desk and I look at reports, specifically the numbers, and I make sure the numbers are correct. That's pretty much my job. You figure out the rest. Hey V3, have you watched Transformers Animated? If yes, then what is your favorite design on the series? Yes, I have watched Transformers Animated. It is a pretty good Transformers show, though I will say on a rewatch, the first two seasons weren't actually that good. It's really season three where it gets awesome. Uh, favorite design? That's tough. I loved all the Decepticons. The Decepticons looked awesome. You know, I loved, what's his face? Blitzwing? Blitzwing looked cool. Megatron looks awesome awesome but i suppose if i had to pick one lockdown lockdown was just wow what a cool looking transformer and his car his car was amazing and there you have it another episode of tv3 over and done with if you have any other things you want to highlight if there was anything i missed that you want me to discuss further always feel free to leave your comment in the comment section below and i'll be sure to get to it in a future episode now, as for the schedule this week, on Wednesday, you can look forward to a review of the high-grade Hyper Gyanko, the other Gundam girl, one that I've been super excited to build. And on Friday, you can look forward to a review of the high-grade build fighters, Lightning Black Warrior. Spoilers, it's just a black repaint with a big gun. Anyways, that's all for me. Gotta get back to the real world. I'll see you all in seven days. Bye!